Well, I think you got to dig a little deeper. You know, um, you know, when Trump first got into office, he uh, was just made good on every campaign promise that he could. Um, you know, even if he tried and didn't get it done, he was still on that path. And then something happened. The deep yeah. state kind of got to him and uh, and they won that battle. And now we're on the war path again. So you, I don't think you can understand this, you know, in terms of just Trump alone. You have to understand that there have been a, a, a group of neocons who are very interested in bombing everything they possibly can. They're running a variety of agendas, which are range from the craven to the ridiculous. The craven being they all get rich doing this. And the ridiculous is um, trying to engineer a geopolitical outcome that at, leads the United States on top and everybody else sort of like hopelessly at the bottom. Um, I think it's ridiculous because uh, the world doesn't work that way anymore if it ever did. Um, but it's still very dangerous. And this whole thing with North Korea concerns me the most. And if we do you know, uh, there are nuts in these neocons. They, I'm, I'm sure you've seen them, Kerry. They've put out position papers that say things like, well, nuclear war is winnable with Russia even, you know, if we did it just right and, you know, all this stuff. Um, they don't think through the consequences well. Remember, these are the same people. Oh, they're going to greet us with flowers in Baghdad, right? Nope. Right. They don't get it um, in that way. Or they're just they're so deluded. I don't know what they're thinking. But I've seen them thinking now that we're just going to do a little bombing in North Korea and somehow the, the leadership will topple and, and that'll be that. What they don't understand is that um, Seoul, uh, South Korea, is within artillery range of the DMZ line and there are about 20,000 artillery pieces that could push 500, 600,000 um, artillery pieces into Seoul, you know, per hour. Um, so unless you take out all 20,000 pieces somehow, which is not possible with a, you know, what do we got out there? We got the USS Vincent and maybe another carrier group. Sorry. You know, you got a couple hundred jets. You're going to run a couple hundred sorties. You know, you're going to take out a couple hundred, um, of these, uh, of these installations. Seoul just goes into a smoking ruin at that point in time. And the biggest mystery to me in all this, when these headlines were really running and is that the mystery isn't that this happened, stocks suddenly spiked big time yesterday and gold got hit. The mystery is that people still don't understand that those market moves are just the authorities playing with markets to send signals to keep everybody, if I can put it this way, fat, dumb and happy. Yeah, well, it seems to be working, though, doesn't it? Yes, it does work. Yeah. So there's something uh, to all this. Uh, but for how long? I think uh, reality will dawn eventually, right? It will, but I, dawn is maybe not the right word because that comes slowly and you can see it coming. I think when, when this finally goes, it's more like um, an avalanche or a rubber band that snaps or something. It's going to be very um, violent, I think, because we're way over the tips of our skis on this. So I'll go with the avalanche metaphor. You know, we're really, you know, we're just pumped and pumped and pumped and just inflated everything to ridiculous levels. And all of those ridiculous levels require nothing really changing in this story. When things change, I think you get a uh, what is would be colloquially called a reversion to the mean. But you and I are going to call it a market crash with dislocations and fear and panic and all of that stuff. And that's interesting. You mentioned a reversion to the mean because our good friend, Danielle Park, uh, who's very scientific in her approach, approach towards investing, uh, cutting out the BS, she's always saying, eventually the market will revert to its mean, which, what is that, uh, 15 times earnings, P-E ratio, 12 times well, in a recession? Yeah, but if, if, you, if you shoot past the mean to, in order to uh, correct for a while, you, you could easily see markets get down to a place with a P-E of 7, 8, 9. We've been exactly. there before. Hey, and uh, gold to Dow ratio. Uh, we've seen it go down as low as 1 to 1 before. Uh, I think during the uh, height of the crash, it was uh, it was like uh, remember the exact number five to one or six to one mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. so uh, so it, we're talking relative valuations as well as uh, nominal valuations and and the problem is you never know when it's going to happen, do you? Well, no, nobody ever does. It, you know, markets are complex systems, and here's one thing we know about complex systems: you can't predict them. Um, so only in retrospect, people go, Oh, it was the archduke getting shot. Oh, yeah. it was, you know, we, we don't know. Yeah. Um, but it'll happen and then people will try and assign meaning to it. But the truth is it's unpredictable and will be some random thing and, and it will happen. And most people are very badly prepared for that. I think either financially or more importantly, emotionally, you know, a lot of the same stuff we saw in 2008 
It's going to show up, but this time bigger, because I think this is a bigger crash. This time, this is really for all the marbles, because really what's been happening is the world has been attempting to run the dumbest experiment ever, which is, hey, let's grow our credit at twice the rate of our income, and we'll just do that forever. Nothing bad could ever happen, right? And everybody right. loved it, of course. You know, it's like living with somebody who just maxes out their credit cards and then gets a new one that they can double down on. Uh, it's real fun, you know, until the yeah. bills come due. And when these bills come due, among them will be this one labeled confidence in central banking. And once <laughs> they lose that confidence, I tell you, there's a we're going to not we're going to mean revert and overcorrect because it's not just that the market's a little extended right now. It's that we humans, but Americans in particular, have been trying to live beyond our means for 48 years now. And we have 48 years of correcting to do here, not uh, six years of market pumping. You know, it's much bigger than that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm always reminded, and you've heard me say it many times, Will Rogers' famous quote, well, ignorance got us into this mess and ignorance <laughs> will get us out, right? <laughs> <laughs> And here's hoping that yeah. the forces of ignorance uh, work their magic, right? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, forget it. We have no outs here. So how do we do it as gently as possible, though they don't seem to really care? Oh, well, um, uh, you know, this is, I don't, personally, I don't think there is any gentle, easy way out of this. There's going to be pain involved. That's why. At peak prosperity, you know, we help people do three things. One is knowing, okay, here's a crash course, here's some context, here's, you know, the de debt data for the last 48 years. Here it is, right? So the knowing is important, but the knowing is useless unless you take action. And I think those are individual actions. I'm glad people just think that they can, you know, change things by voting or marching or all that. God bless them. But uh, you should have more than your toolkit than a march on Washington, right? And that includes taking care of your own resilience as best you can. This is about assuming personal responsibility for your outcome again. So as best you can, you know, you manage your finances, you build up your other forms of capital, things like your living capital and social capital, all of that. Um, and then finally, there's a bigger thing here, which is uh, we really have to change a lot of things. And that begins with yourself. So we talk about that as the being part. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, listen, that's we work with the individual level because I don't have any hope, Carrie. I have none that we're going to solve this from the top down. You know, it wouldn't have mattered who got elected into office. You know, uh, I, I consider Trump to be, I think he meant well, I, in, you know, from his own frame of reference, his perspective, I think that he was sincere in his campaign pledges and they, um, the swamp drained him in about, you know, 40 days. Um, you know, that was about all it took. So uh, there's a, there's a deep sickness running in the United States of America. It's been there a long time. I'm not going to say it's only in the United States. It exists elsewhere too. Uh, but that deep sickness is about, it's, it's, um, it's about the power that's been, that's been abused and, and misused, you know, and uh, Abraham Lincoln said, nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. I just feel like, you know, DC's just gone off. You know, we, we've tested their character and has been found wanting. <laughs> uh, you found their character? I didn't think they had any character whatsoever. Their character no, and, is and, non-existent. And, and we, yeah, we got to shift that that quote a little bit because, you know, he said any man, but we can put women in there, too. You know, I look at, at, at the crazy nut jobs, who, you know, um, that are up there, uh, you know, leading ostensibly from the from the feminine position. But no, you know, they're just as much war hawk, power hungry, uh, you know, crazy people as anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't it the truth? It, doesn't it amaze you? I mean, when you look at what's occurred and what's going to occur and yet what do they do? What do they do about it? Right. Uh, more of the same tried and true failed thinking. It got us into this jam, just to quote Einstein, because, you know, I'm into quotes. Uh, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. Right. And what have right. we done as a species, as a race of beings to upgrade our thinking? Yes. On a personal level, I agree. People, you probably have increased your level. But as a whole, humanity seems to be sliding backwards. 
Well, in, indeed. And, and I'm wondering if, you know, this isn't, you know, one of the things I had to study more deeply in order to begin to understand why it was that, that this really compelling information that anybody can access, why it wasn't leading to more outrage, more concern, more actions in particular. Uh, and so, you know, it doesn't take much of a tour through the data to discover that um, humans really prefer to change by pain rather than insight, Right. So show up to somebody with a bunch of statistics on smoking. Mm, that's not going to be nearly as effective as the diagnosis of lung cancer. Uh, same story for drinking, same story for you name it, right? Um, so if we prefer to change individually by the pain level, that's equally true, maybe more so at the community or, or a cultural level. So I think we've just got a date with something that's really ugly. Um, you know, it's going to take a big salmon to the head for the United States to go, oh, we're not special. Hmm. You know? We're not exceptional. It was we were we were the world's number one exporter for years and years, but we were exporting um, debt and currency, you know, and weapons. Don't forget weapons and weapons. And a lot of weapons. That's our tricks and tricks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you IOUs, electronic representations of currency and weapons. Um, it's yeah. really not a sustainable model. You know, the one if you ever want to just look at the uh, cumulative trade deficit of the United States, we're running a trade deficit that if it was an economy. I think would be the eighth or ninth largest in the world right now. Yeah. And look it's at, a really big number. And and you look at like California there, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, what they've done with debt is pretty yes. spectacular. And, uh, and then they try to get you to believe that everything's fine. We're multi-trillion dollars in the hole as far as pensions go and everything else. I mean, the debt in California has just been stupendous. Yeah. And listen, that will all be reneged upon, but there's two ways you can renege if you're a government. One um, is you just default like everybody like, ah, sorry, you're not getting it. I know I promised it and I said, oh, and legally I'm required, but you're not getting it. And the yeah. second way is um, you inflate it away. So you just create lots of inflation. So, hey, I did tell you I was going to give you a $25,000 a year pension, but it's only it only buys like half what it did when I first promised it. Right. So that's yeah. that's a second way you get out from under that. But let's be real clear about this. California is never going to make full on their promises because they can't. Because the only way they could is if really fast economic growth came back. And that's not a magic thing. That's goods and services. What are those? Well, those are real things that people produce. Well, how do people produce stuff? Well, they use resources. What kind of resources? Well, glad you asked. You know, and you just chase this thing back and you discover that all of the models for pensions, all of the models for, hey, stocks give you 10% returns, you know, those are all based on a set of decades that cannot be reproduced in terms of the growth cycle of an industrial economy, in terms of the resources required, given we're, we're globally competitive for these things now. China's the number one importer of oil right now, overtook the United States right. about a year and a half ago, right? right? We're in deep competition with them around that. If you don't understand that, you don't understand anything that's going on with the um, South China Sea and the Senkaku Islands and, and all of the saber rattling that's happening. That isn't a couple of militaries going, oh, we have to protect shipping lanes. It's about the oil assets and the and natural gas assets in the South China Sea, right? Yeah. If you understand that, now you, this all begins to make sense. So nothing in the Middle East makes sense unless you can say the word out loud, oil, right? That's a, it's not the only factor, but if you're, you know, this whole, we need democracy in Syria, please, yeah. nobody cares about democracy in Syria, in the United States government. We don't care about innocent children, you know, it's just, you know, none of that stuff. And it's just, what's astonishing to me, you ask, you know, am I surprised? Yeah, I'm surprised, Carrie. I'm surprised that people read this stuff and they think it's real and they mm -hmm. believe in it. Like, oh my God, he gassed his own people. Like, oh. You know what the United States did just a week prior in, in Mosul? We dropped a bomb, killed 240 civilians, right? No. Anybody who's, who's concerned about that? Well, but we're the good guys. That's collateral damage, I guess. I don't know. We didn't talk yeah. about it. I don't know. And NPR didn't run it endlessly and tell me I should be upset about it. So I guess I'm not. You know, it's just yeah. it's that simple. Well, uh, so most people are getting played. There's a heavy duty propaganda piece going on. The markets are propaganda right now. They are a, they are an emotional signaling device. It's meant to convey a piece of information. And I and my worry is people believe that stuff and they shouldn't. It's just it's leading them down to the, the wrong path, to the wrong conclusions. And every minute that people spend not squaring up with the reality of the situation, 
is another minute wasted that they don't get to use to improve themselves, increase their chances of success in the future, become prosperous, all that. And um, sorry to be long winded, but I'm really yeah. passionate here. There's I, an I enormous understand. wealth destruction coming. Yeah. And that wealth destruction is going to blindside most people and you can still dodge it today. Not forever, but you can still step aside if you choose. Most people won't. Bad choice. Yeah. Well, look, most people, you wake up every morning, you're one paycheck ahead of insolvency. And all you're trying to do is go to work, pay your immediate obligations and not go bankrupt. That's the state of the middle class in the U.S. And when you're up against that kind of force, how concerned are you about what the hell's going on in Syria or North Korea or Afghanistan? It makes no difference. All you're trying to do is survive. You're not even thinking about thriving. And that's what I mean about having to lift your mental state. A, become a critical thinker and B, uh, concentrate on the things that will help you get through what is a very likely reality rather than uh, worrying about uh, the state of, of the world. Uh, you know, people are just, uh, you're just not going to do it because A, you feel helpless. There's nothing you can do about it. And B, uh, you're too concerned with your kids, you know, going to school, not becoming corrupted by the educational industrial complex. Uh, you have, so many other concerns that it's abstract about some crazy guy in uh, Korea, you know, 9,000 miles away who might blow up the world. I mean, really, is that what you're going to yeah. be dwelling on, Chris? I mean, in the scheme of things, you're not. So, right. Yeah, it's so important that you uh, really unshackle yourself from the thought, whether it's the propaganda of the war or whatever it might be. Uh, government's propaganda, you need to become a free thinker first and foremost. I couldn't agree more. And, uh, and I have a lot of compassion for the idea that it's actually, that's not easy. Um, not first, not everybody's built for it. Some are, are, can do that more easily than others, but everybody still, it takes effort to let go of an idea, um, go into that unknown territory and then come out with a different idea. Uh, I don't know why, but biologically it's very tricky to do. You know, if, if um, if it wasn't hard, everybody would be evolved and conscious and all that <laughs> stuff. And, you know, it doesn't Very fully true. work out that way. So it does take effort. But but this is, you know, in times past, I think people would go, well, I really want to be that person. I want to be that sort of free thinker. I, I want to be a improve myself. I want to be in command of of, of my own self. And, and I would love to mature and all of that stuff. But the word, the operative word and everything I just said is want. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, when it just boils down to want, I got a comfortable life. Nah, I'll get to it. You know, and it doesn't happen. What I'm yeah. trying to tell people is that they need to begin doing that because this stuff's coming. Yeah. And so it's a whole different prospect when you say, you know, you, you need to change rather than you might want to. You need to figure out how to free your mind rather than you might want to. And if and here's why. If you don't do it, you won't see what's coming. And you're going to be one of those people who's just blindsided. And good luck. You know, that'll be fun to manage, too. but. It'll be a more expensive proposition every way you care to measure that than taking the, the effort now to improve yourself and free your mind. And by the way, you know, those those tools you learn in all of that, um, they're really fantastic. They, they really help. Um, you know, here you like quotes. Here's one from uh, Thomas Jefferson. I love mm -hmm. he says uh, nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, but you don't just do that. That's not an act. You can't be cool and unruffled just by, you know, masking up and pretending you got it. Like he's speaking to something deep. You got to, you got to be actually unruffleable. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different ball of wax. That means you don't react to things. You respond now yeah. to get there. That takes time and it takes learning. And trust me, when the, when the, when the artillery is flying, it's bad time to try and figure out how you're going to like, accomplish that uh, particular place. But if you get there, it will help you in everything, your personal relationships, your business meetings, you're going to hold at your ability to influence. If you're a public speaker, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Those are benefits that accrue right now. So again, you ask what I'm surprised about. I'm surprised that more people don't basically take advantage of what I consider to be life hacks, which is like, Oh, I'm way more successful when I do it this way than that way. I see other people being successful doing it this way instead of that way. 
Uh, but I'm still surprised. A lot of people look at both those things like, yeah, I'm still going to do it that way. You know? Yeah. yeah. Even if it's not working, it's still comfortable. So you stick with the tried and untrue. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good way to put it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, look, it's, we're not taught this way from youth. Uh, I think Plato said uh, the life, uh, the world is a prison, but you need help to, uh, to help you uh, break the chains of bondage. And it's, it's mm-hmm. so true, but not to get too philosophical, you can easily start now just by questioning everything you read, whether Chris or I wrote it or anyone else. You need to question it, not just take it for authority or for truth because it's on the Internet and, you know, they have a nice looking Web page, right? <laughs> yep. That's <laughs> really where it starts. So anyway, Chris, where's the best place to uh, to find your work? Um, I know your, your website, uh, peakprosperity.com. Got a lot on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. So, and sure, you can, you can, uh, find us on Facebook, on Twitter, LinkedIn, all those places. Um, but really the best place is at peakprosperity.com. Find us there. You can, you know, just uh, find all the other resources out there, but increasingly doing video, uh, uh and it's a great forcing function. Want to reach more people in the way they want to be reached. Um, so we're, uh, be on the lookout for more and more of the video content.